Hello guys, welcome to Surveying Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your surveying problems academically and even on site. So today we are going to do area computation. We've actually gotten the coordinates we want to use to compute for the area on our previous um, traverse computation videos. The link to those videos will be shared on the description section of this particular video so you can just do yourself the best by just checking them out on how we started the whole process so we got the corrected coordinates of some points or of the points that were established during the traverse computation exercise during that traversing exercise rather and after we carried out the computation we got our coordinates here now today we want to compute for the area that means the extent of land covered the extent of the piece of facility or the land that was covered so now what do we do for this particular cross coordinate method we are going to draw this simple table there's a table we want to draw that we'll draw rather or we've drawn actually that we use to compute for the area. So now using this method, sometimes it is called cross coordinate because you see it's crossing a line like this. So now the idea is very simple. Your first northern will multiply what? Your second easting. Your second northern will multiply your third easting. So that's how they multiply themselves. And when you come to this next line, you see that your first easting will multiply what? Your second northern. Your second easting will multiply what? Your third northern. So by multiplying themselves like that, you find a cross here. Like they are crossing themselves like you find a star or a cross. So that's where the name cross coordinate comes by. So without wasting much of our time, we are going to proceed now another part of the process is that if you look at this i've actually written i've actually computed the area for the partial area rather now there is a column here for area one and there is another column for area two so now this column is for the partial area so how do you get the values on this partial area how do you get the values on this particular column for the partial area so as i told us earlier there is a multiplication going down like this, multiplication going down, multiplication going down, multiplication going down. So when this first northern multiplies the second easting, we get the first area here, the partial area actually. This northern multiplies the third easting here, we get this value. This multiply this, we get this value. And then this multiplies this, we get this value. So that's how we got the values here. So not to really spend more time on it we just have to go further to the next step now the next step is the second partial area the second partial area is gotten by what you know the first one was this way now this for the area we are going to get on this second partial area it will be coming this other way so this first easting here will multiply what the second northern the second easting will multiply the third northing the third is thin, we multiply the fourth, and that's how it goes. So no matter the number you have, no matter the number of points you have for your traverse points or your traverse stations or whatever the case will be, this is the idea you go by it. So each of the products, as you get them, you write them under the column for the partial areas. So now another thing I want to tell us on this video is that to make the work faster and smoother and then to avoid some personal error, I will advise us to do what to store the products on our calculators. You know, this is the calculator we've been using, and on this calculator, we have alphabets A to F, we have X, Y, and M where we can store values. So, for instance, now let's take this first value as an example. We have 860205, sorry, 205.405 multiplied by the second easting here which is 600314.655 we have something like this 5.163939109 times 10 raised to power 11 you know by the time you continue your multiplication you'll be having very large numbers like this so when you want to carry out the next operation we should be adding all of this together you find it difficult to be typing these things on your calculator so what i will advise us as i've been advising us in our previous videos is to make sure you store your values on your calculator storing your values on your calculator has so many advantages you can easily record them it reduces error it makes your work more accurate especially if you want to get your answers to a very very high degree of decimal place so the best thing you are going to do is what is to make sure you store these values on your calculator so how do you do it you say shift this shift button here 
you press this arrow cl the store will come up because store is actually a, a second function here then you choose any alphabet so let's say we choose alphabet a which means the product we got for this multiplication has been stored on alphabet a so anytime we press alpha a and then we say equal to that value comes out i hope it's very clear so i know if you don't really get it from this first explanation you just have to rewind this video and then you get it clearly so that's how you go about for all of them so by the time you want to add these things up because these products as i said earlier they are quite large numbers so pressing them on your calculator you might not be able to get all the values right or you might make a mistake or stuff like that but storing them on your calculator like this makes the work easier it makes it faster and you get more accurate results so by the time you add them up you get 2.06516889 times 10 raised to the power 12. So you do the same for this other partial area and you get 2.06156883 times 10 raised to the power 12. So the next thing you are going to do is we want to determine the area. Remember, I was telling us that these two are what are partial areas. So we want to do what? We want to determine the area. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to find the difference between these two values. So now what, what are we going to do? After you've added them, you have a sum here, you added this, you have a sum here. You know, there can still be space on your calculator. And if there is no space on your calculator, you can always overwrite. For instance, now you've added, you store this as A, B, C, D on your calculator. And then you came back to this point, you store this as E, F, then let's say this is X and Y. Remember that all the almost all the alphabet has been exhausted. You only have M to store a value now. So you can still store this your sum as A because you don't need it again. I'm just telling all this thing so that it can make our work work easier when we're in an exam or maybe any form of assessment or stuff like that. So you know that you don't need A, B, C, D. So when you get your first sum and your second sum, you know that all the values on those alphabet you don't need them again the next thing you can do you can override so by the time you want to by the time you want to find the difference after you get the sum you can say this sum should be stored as alphabet a since you will not need anything again please i know why i'm taking my time to explain all these things to us if you have any difficulty which is maybe possible for us i just want us to do or to pause the video rewind get it and then always come back because the idea behind our videos is to give you solution and if you don't give you the solution then the idea has been what has been forfeited so i believe that has been explained so by the time you overwrite it with either a b c or d since you don't need those alphabet again you now recall them as either a minus b or a minus c or a minus d remember the essence of storing them on your calculator is for what to make the work easier to make your work faster it even gives you accurate results because the values you might write out might not be complete but on the calculator they are stored completely so by the time you find out their difference you get something like 64796.196 6 so what we need is the area not two times the area so the reason why we have two times the area is because of these two partial areas so by the time we will now find their difference we say area divided by two area will now be this difference we have rather divided by two therefore the area covered by this by these four points on site is actually 32398.098 square meters that means 32,319.098 square meters now there was something i failed to mention what i failed to mention on this table is that by the time you impute your the coordinates of the point you repeat your first point because i actually made the comment here by writing one you know this is one this is two this is three and this is what and this is four so the essence of repeating one year is to make sure we have a closed loop so that's why you we still repeated one year so that was the point i did not mention earlier so actually i've mentioned all the salient points you need to know in order to compute for areas using compute for area rather using what using coordinate method so the method is very simple it's easy it's fast when you use your calculators very well and i believe you understood it and i believe we've actually given you solution to this particular solving problems thanks for coming to class today i hope you've learned something and please if you're a new source if you're a new visit if you're a visitor here yeah, 
and then you've not subscribed to our channel subscribe to the channel invite your friends to do the same and make sure you like the video you also leave your comments there until i see you next time ensure you take your study seriously make sure you make your observations on site very accurate and then make sure you take good care of yourself see you next time